grace and peace and welcome to worship this morning here at Northminster Presbyterian Church. What a joy and a blessing it is to be gathered together to worship God on this third Sunday of Easter. We hope and pray that you are well and we want to know how we can be supporting you and praying for you. If there are needs that you have or needs that you see out in the community, if there are things that your church family can be doing to help support you, we do hope that you will let us know. There's lots of different ways to contact us. You can use our website, you can use our social media pages on Facebook and Instagram can reach out to the staff on our cell phones or uh, by email or through a text message and let us know how we can be praying for you. Let us know if there's a need that you have or a need that you see in the community uh, that Northminster might be able to help with. Additionally, there are some great efforts being made on behalf of our congregation to care for one another and to care for the community. You may have seen on our website or on our social media pages or in emails you received this week a link to sign up to learn more about some of the efforts being uh, being done or to sign up to help with those efforts. I want to invite you to go ahead and look at those again. Look at the infographic that's being provided and if you have an interest or an ability in being able to join us in these efforts, we certainly welcome your participation. This evening, Sunday, April 26th at 5 p.m., our session will be meeting via Zoom. The elders are looking forward to gathering together to be about the business of the congregation. If there are matters that you would like for these elders to consider in their time together, please contact me as soon as possible so we can add that to our agenda. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God. Please join me in the call to worship inspired by Psalm 116, as you are able, with the words printed on your screen. We see and experience evidence of God's love for us all around. God hears us when we cry and when we pray. God's ear is bent down towards us. In our struggles, in our doubts, and in times of uncertainty, we call out to God and God responds, full of mercy and compassion. So we offer our thanksgiving for God's unwavering presence in our lives. God has kept the promise. God's steadfast love has never failed. We will worship our God and sing of God's good news to all creation. Alleluia. Amen. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Before our Father's throne, ardent prayers, our fears, our hopes, our aims are one, our comfort and our cares. We share our mutual woes, our mutual burdens bear, and often for each other flows the sympathizing team. When we are called to part, it gives us inward pain, but we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. From sorrow, toil, and pain and sin we 
shall be free and a perfect love and a friendship reign through all eternity. Good morning, Northminster. Please join me in the call to confession. Even when we hear the good news of salvation and restoration, we are sometimes still reluctant to believe. We know God to hear our prayers and we still choose to remain silent. God, or, God offers us a new life and we are reluctant to let go of the old life. Let us take a moment in silence to consider what we have been holding back, to confess to God and to one another the opportunities we have missed to share the good news. And then let us join together in this morning's prayer of confession. Let us pray. Gracious God, we have prayers to offer and words to speak, but sometimes our actions do not fall in line with our words or our prayers. Forgive us. Even though your grace abounds for all creation, we try to restrict it from those with whom we disagree. Have mercy on us. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, empower us to act as Easter people who know of your resurrection power, who receive your abundant love and radical hospitality, and share it with all creation without hesitation. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our crucified Savior and resurrected Lord. Amen. Oh, what goodness abounds. We worship a God that loves us beyond measure. Our God conquered death and brings hope, healing, wholeness, and abundance to this world. We are united together, siblings in the family of God, and we can rejoice for in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Let us live out this assurance, this promise and ritual. Grateful for the promises of joy and of peace, let us share that peace with one another. There is no right or wrong way to share God's peace. It is more than a greeting, but a ritual we practice to celebrate the assurance of our forgiveness and the opportunity to share that peace and that forgiveness with others. May the peace of Christ be with you. And Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not stop them. Good morning, everyone. I am so glad that you're here. I'm glad every week that we are here and that we get to share this time together using these screens and these microphones and all the things that keep us connected. Now, I don't know if you got a chance to see it yet, but this weekend, Miss Julie shared a video with us all and she taught us how to make pinwheels. I think it's a really cool craft and you can get an adult's help to make your own pinwheel using Miss Julie's instructions on our YouTube channel or on our page on Facebook. Now, the reason that she wanted to show us how to make pinwheels is because they remind her of the Holy Spirit. Have you heard of the Holy Spirit? I think you probably have. That's God moving in our lives. That's what the Holy Spirit is. See, like she said to us in that video, the Holy Spirit is sort of like the wind sometimes. That's how we can understand the Holy Spirit. We know that the wind is there, but we can't see it. Watch, like, you can't see that. I'm blowing, you know I'm blowing, but you can't see. I can blow as hard as I want. And it's still, you just can't see it. But with a pinwheel, oh, you can see that the wind's there because the pinwheel moves. You can see the effects of me blowing. So the Holy Spirit, as Miss Julie taught us, is sort of like the wind. We know and believe that she is there, but we can't see the Holy Spirit. But we can see how she moves in our lives because we see God helping us and showing us things and blessing us every day. Isn't that such a cool craft to remind us of something so cool and so important? I think so. And while pinwheels remind Miss Julie of the Holy Spirit, I want to share with you that Miss Julie actually reminds me of the Holy Spirit herself. See. I believe the Holy Spirit is God's helper to us, and Miss Julie helps me so much. Without her, I would never be able to have made this pinwheel or any of the really cool crafts that she's made and taught us how to do uh, back when we weren't doing this online and we were in church and while we're doing it now. She helps me, and that reminds me of the Holy Spirit. There are other people who remind me of the Holy Spirit too. Pastor Jill, for example. Every single day she helps me with phone calls and emails and text messages 
and she helps me get things done as we work together to bring you all these messages each week. Mr. Nathan, he works so hard to put the song videos together, and that helps me so, so, so much. Thank you, Mr. Nathan. And those people helping me remind me of the Holy Spirit helping me. My wife, Miss Kara, who you've seen, she helps me by taking care of answering phones when I can't do it. She takes care of Toby. She takes care of me in so many ways, you guys. And I could never do what I do without her. And that reminds me of the Holy Spirit, too. There are so many people watching this video with you right now at the same time that you're watching it who help me and help each other. And that reminds me of how the Holy Spirit, how God helps us. I love that I get to have those reminders and I hope that I remind people of the Holy Spirit too, just like this little pinwheel. I hope that you can think of some people who help you and I hope you can think of some people you can help this week. And I hope those remind you of how God the Holy Spirit helps you. All right, thank you so much for listening. And don't forget to make a pinwheel and show us. Talk to you again soon. Our scripture lesson this morning from the Acts of the Apostles, the second chapter, beginning at the 36th verse. Therefore, let the whole house of Israel know beyond any doubt that God made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When they heard this, they were deeply shaken. They asked Peter and the other disciples, what are we to do? Peter replied, you must repent and be baptized, each of you, in the name of Jesus the Messiah, that your sins may be forgiven. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For this promise is for you, for your children, and all who are far away to everyone whom the Lord our God calls. In support of his testimony, Peter used many other arguments and kept saying, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message, convinced by his arguments and accepted what he said, were baptized. That very day, about 3,000 were added to the number of those converted. All of those devoted themselves to the apostles' instruction and to communal living, to the breaking of bread and prayers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our scripture this morning is giving us the tail end of a sermon that Peter was giving. This is the famous sermon, comes at the conclusion after the scripture that we normally read around Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes and the wind blows and tongues of fire are seen on the heads of one another and everyone can hear others speaking in different languages and yet they can all understand each other. The presence of the Holy Spirit is well known in the midst of this sermon that Peter is giving. This is Peter, the rock upon whom Jesus was going to build his church. This is the same Peter to whom Jesus said, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter said, no, 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 that wouldn't happen. That wouldn't, that wouldn't be me. That will never happen, Lord. I will go with you to the death. And yet we all know that it did happen. And the guilt and the horror that Peter must have felt when he heard that rooster crow that third time, knowing that he had denied Jesus. So Peter, giving this dramatic sermon, knows better than most what the good news means. The good news that God's promise of forgiveness, that God's promise of hope, God's promise of justice, God's promise of abundant love and radical hospitality is for all of us. It's for you and it's for your children and it's for everyone who is far away, all the earth, all whom the Lord God calls. That Peter who experienced that disappointment and that guilt and then saw the good news of a risen Christ 
and a God so powerful and so loving that resurrection became reality, knows that in Christ, human betrayal is overcome, and in Christ, rejection is overcome, in Christ, even death is overcome. And so Peter offers an invitation to all sinful people, and that is pretty much everybody. That includes us, all the world. For sinful people to know a grace that is far stronger than even the greatest sins. That God's forgiveness, God's hope, God's justice, God's abundant love and radical hospitality is for all. It's for everyone. And I keep focusing on that verse 39. This promise is for you and for your children and for everyone who is far away and all whom the Lord God calls. And I think about the ways in which God calls us to be the church and to be community together. You know, right now in the midst of all of this uncertainty in these days when many of us are staying home and sheltering in place, there has never been a time when it has been easier to shut out those with whom we disagree. If we don't like what we see on our social media feeds, we can click the unfollow button. If we don't like what we're hearing on the news, we can click and turn off the television. We can hang up the phone. We cannot pick up the phone when someone calls. We're not put in these situations where we're coming face to face with those with whom we disagree. And it's easy to surround ourselves with people who think like us and people who look like us and people who agree with us. And yet, the promise of God's abundant love and God's radical hospitality is for everyone. Everyone whom the Lord God calls, and that's everyone, that's all creation. So despite the fact that there are scads and loads of things out in the world that are going on, people with whom we disagree, people who have hurt us, people who have betrayed us, people whose sins we find so great that we cannot offer forgiveness, God's promise is for them. God's promise is for everyone whom God calls, which is all creation and all the earth. And Peter, knowing the desperation that he felt and the guilt that he felt after his betrayals and after his rejection, knows the good news of God's promise. And that's what he's preaching. And so many, 3,000, scripture tells us, people heard that message and found hope in that message. And were added to the number of people who were converted, were added to the number of people who were learning and knowing and receiving the radical hospitality of the Lord our God. We get to share in Peter's message. We get to share in convincing the rest of the world that God's promise of abundant love and radical hospitality is for them. And there's lots of ways to go about doing that. Because we know from experience and we have heard before in scripture and elsewhere that our actions and our words matter. And the ways in which we show up for people matter. And that is the way in which they come to know the Holy Spirit. That is the way in which they come to know and learn and experience that God's promise of abundant love and radical hospitality is for them. Maybe it is through participating in a worship service. Maybe it is receiving a call to check up on them. Maybe it's receiving a meal that's been prepared by wonderful chefs. Maybe it's getting help around your house, deliveries of groceries, a note in the mail, connecting. One of the things we hear about from Peter's sermon is this encouragement to be baptized. And we know that in baptism, we become a family. 
Baptism is the sign and the seal of the covenant of grace with God and Christ as our brother, to connected and unified together with one another. Our baptism reminds us that we are family and family of God. God's promise is for us and for our children and for everyone whom is far away, everyone whom the Lord God calls. And family of God, it is our joyous responsibility, our great challenge and task to share the good news of that promise with the world. So as we go about our lives, maybe rather than shutting out everyone with whom we disagree, maybe rather than shutting ourselves off from the things that scare us or the things that challenge us, perhaps we take the opportunity to be reminded of the greatness of God's promise, of the greatness of God's love and hope that was stronger than human betrayal, that was stronger than rejection, that was even stronger than death. That following Christ's example, we can practice love through forgiveness. We can practice love through the pursuit of justice. And we can practice radical hospitality because we are receiving radical hospitality. And we know that the goodness of God will be spread throughout all of the world when we share in that love together. May this be so. Amen. So we affirm our faith this morning with an affirmation of faith that's inspired by the Confession of Belhar. It's the most recent confession to be added to the Presbyterian Church's constitution in the Book of Confessions. It was written in the Global South as a response to the situation of apartheid that was growing in South Africa. And one of the many reasons that it became a part of the Book of Confessions, a part of writings to which our community of Presbyterians affix some additional authority is because of the beautiful way that it talks about the unity of the church. Now, scripture reminds us, as our scripture did this morning, that we are the church, and there are many ways to be the church. And so as we together affirm our faith using these words from the Confession of Belhar, may we be reminded of one of the many ways that we are called to be the church. Together we confess that God unites us in faith. Together we come to know the height and the breadth and the depth of the love of Christ. Together we are built up to the full stature of Christ. Together we know and bear one another's burdens. We admonish one another. We comfort one another. We suffer with one another. We need one another. We build up one another. Together we pray. Together we serve God in this world. Together we fight against all which may threaten or hinder this unity. Together we work to extend God's love and hospitality to the entirety of God's beloved community. Thanks be to God.
We give in grateful thanksgiving for all that God has given us. This is the time where we make our love visible through giving. Whatever we may offer, may we do so with cheerful hearts, with faith that our gifts will bring glory to God and hope to the beloved community. Our offerings are making a difference in the community, and we so appreciate how kindness is shown through donations and the sharing of resources. If you are able to do so, continuing your financial pledges and contributions is extremely helpful. These can be mailed to the church, donated through the PayPal link on our website, or by arranging a direct debit through your financial institution or with our church office. You're welcome to call the church office if you would like assistance. We give thanks for you and the outpouring of grace and compassion being shared. The blessing of our unity in Christ is that we know that it is God who makes us a family. And our family loves one another and we pray for one another and we rejoice with one another when there is rejoicing to do and we stick with one another when hard things come. And the beautiful thing is that we know we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength and that means we can do hard things. And some hard things look like staying home and not being able to gather together with our loved ones, not being able to experience the world the way we thought or to have our expectations met. And sometimes hard things look like lost jobs or death or grief. It may look different to many people, but we can do hard things because we are a family, because we have Christ who is giving us strength, and through the love of Christ, we have one another. So please join me this week in holding one another in prayer, in honoring the beauty and the celebrations and the things that are occurring with creativity and imagination amidst so much uncertainty, in birthday parades, in graduations and new jobs and exciting things that are coming down the road that right now are being celebrated distantly. And we look forward to the time when we can celebrate in person. We celebrate love and the celebration of marriages and anniversaries and wonderful good that is coming. We celebrate and give thanks for those who have been sick and are in the process of recovery. And we also pray for those who are hoping and praying for that recovery. We pray for all those who have been impacted by lots of the severe weather that has happened in uh, areas south of here that have been impacted by tornadoes and severe winds and thunderstorms. We pray for those who are in need of healing, no matter what kind of healing they're in need of, whether it's healing of mind, of body, of spirit, or of circumstance. We pray for a family whose children have both experienced heart defects, and one of whom has had a successful heart transplant, and now their younger daughter is waiting for a second heart, for a heart transplant for her. So we pray for safety for the family. We pray for the daughter. We pray for whomever would be donating such a heart. We pray for the doctors and the nurses and all those who are providing care for this family. We pray for our friend Virginia, who is going through treatment and is preparing to have her bone marrow harvested. And we pray for Michael as he cares for her and we pray for all of the doctors and the nurses and everyone who is contributing to her care. We give thanks for our incredible and amazing healthcare workers, for all of those who are on the front lines who are putting themselves at risk to care for others. We give thanks for healthcare professionals, for doctors and nurses and technicians. We give thanks for chaplains. We say a special prayer for our friend Wilson, who is serving as a chaplain in another state and providing care for many, many patients, including some who are fighting the coronavirus. 
We pray for towns that are shuddering at the closings of plants and the loss of jobs and uncertainty in the economy. And we pray for families who are impacted by all of this uncertainty, for those who are told to shelter in place in a home that doesn't feel safe for them. We pray for those who are experiencing food insecurities and all sorts of other uncertainties. We pray for those who are lonely. We pray for those who are struggling through these days. And we ask for God's peace to surround us and to surround all those who need to be reminded of that wonderful peace that surpasses all understanding and to be reminded that through Christ, we can do all things, which means we can do this too. We can do hard things. We give thanks for the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives and for the abundant love and radical hospitality that has been present in our lives and of which we have seen reminders and beauty each and every day. And so we join our voices together to pray for the sake of the world using the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. Elect from every nation, yet one o'er all the earth, her charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth. One holy name she blesses, partakes one holy food, and to one hope she presses with every grace and due. Though with a scornful wonder this world sees her oppressed, by schisms rent asunder, by heresies distressed. Yet saints their watch are keeping, their cry goes up, how long? And soon the night of weeping shall be the morn of song. Mid toil and tribulation and tumult of her war, she waits the consummation of peace forevermore. Till with a vision glorious her longing eyes are blessed, and the great church victorious shall be the church at rest. Yet she on earth has union with God the Three-in-One, and a mystic sweet communion 
with those whose rest is one. O happy ones and holy, Lord, give us grace that we, like them, the meek and lowly, may live eternally. Friends, as we move to close our time together this morning. I want to remind you that you are invited to join us on a Zoom call immediately following the end of this broadcast with a link that's about to be provided for you. It is always a blessing to be able to see one another's faces and hear one another's voices and share in a few moments of fellowship after worship is over. I also want to remind you of this very important truth the promise of hope, the promise of joy, the promise of God's abundant love and radical hospitality is for you and for your children and for those who are far away to everyone whom the Lord God calls. Let us rest in this assurance that this promise is for all creation. And let us live out that promise with our words and with our actions and with the whole of our lives. In the name of God, our creator, our sustainer, our redeemer. Amen, amen, and amen.